The Volvo XC60 has always been about safety, as is the whole Volvo lineup. But for 2021, the XC60 has even more. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. If this is your first time to the channel, we do a lot more than just car reviews. We do first looks of vehicles you've never seen before, and we give you car smarts because knowledge is power. Hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss anything because we give you information you won't get anywhere else. The 2021 Volvo XC60 is slightly improved over the 2020. What it has added is not just a few other features like 19 inch wheels on certain trim levels. It has removed a few items, which is unusual, and it's also improved a lot of safety. And that's what Volvo is all about safety because they developed the seat belt. A lot of people don't know that. And so safety is really what they're all about. And their mantra is they want no one to get injured in any of their vehicles, as does any manufacturer, but they've set that as their goal. We will give you information on performance, handling, visibility, safety, seating, and 10 categories, including value. In the end, we will give you a car coach reports rating. Why is this important to you? Because a salesperson will sell you on this vehicle, how great it is and how safe it is, but they won't give you information about the details that you'll want to know because as you own this vehicle longer, you'll want to understand that experience so you make the right choice. Let's go for a ride. This is the two liter engine with 250 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. It's not bad, it's not great, but this vehicle is not about performance, it's about getting good fuel economy. This vehicle is the T5 with the two liter turbo, 22 miles to the gallon in the city, 29 on the highway. Although this two liter turbo gets pretty good fuel economy compared to other two liter turbos, it's also missing that extra get up and go. Now we did that test in comfort mode. If we move to dynamic mode, suddenly everything changes and this vehicle takes off. Of course, it doesn't help on fuel economy, but it really takes off to a level that brings it up to the German competitors. And that's what's important that if you do want to move it into a performance more spirited drive, you will be able to do that. Remember that Volvo offers a plug-in hybrid and they'll be also offering the Polestar Edition, which will be all electric. That's a slightly different vehicle. So make sure to check that out up here because we have reviewed all of the Volvo lineup and I do actually like the wagons as much as I do the SUVs. But when it comes to performance for this vehicle, this is the T5 all wheel drive, it earns an eight. This European SUV is designed in Sweden and they understand the Autobahn. They understand performance handling vehicles and they've done a nice job with the XC60. Actually the full Volvo lineup has a really nice German flavor to it. What does that mean when people say it's got a German flavor or a German style? It means it's very specific. It's extremely accurate and it's about safety and performance. Big brakes, which really make a difference. It gives you a nice quiet ride. It absorbs all the differences that are in the roadways and listen to how quiet it is. It's silent in here. They've done a really nice job on making this vehicle still be spirited, still handle nicely, and gives you a good feel for the road. Some vehicles just take that away. You don't get the feel for the roadway. It's sort of so electronic that it's missing. It's not missing in this vehicle, and that's really important. We're in dynamic mode, coming up on the curves on my favorite back roads. I like the fact that this vehicle is very connected with the roadway. That gives you a confidence when you're driving it, when you have your family with you, that you know that when you point it someplace and you add gas, it's going to go. It's not going to give you sort of a vague response. It's a very specific response. And that's what you get from a European designed vehicle. Very specific handling, good brakes, great safety and a really nice vehicle all around that gives you a confidence you don't get with every single vehicle on the market. For handling, this XC60 earns an eight. 
New for 2021, the Volvo XC60 received several new standard safety features, and I think they're really important. One of them is blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and LED headlights. These are all very important parts of adding safety to a vehicle that is loaded with safety. As I continually say, when it comes to Volvo, it's all about safety. And adding these features as standards, rather than making you buy up to those package, which some of the competitors do, and it does save you money because it's about making you safer on the road. When it comes to safety, the Volvo XC60 definitely earns a nine. When it comes to visibility, it's really important to be able to see clearly, obviously, big piece of front glass and nice reasonably height sills for placing your arm or being able to look outside. And that includes in the second row. They haven't made the sill height so high that it limits your visibility. Looking out the back, there is a huge piece of glass. One of the things I like is they didn't make the headrest so big like they do in the front row that it blocks your visibility. And this makes the visibility much more improved. The around view camera assists in parking so you don't damage your wheels or the vehicle. So for visibility, it earned a nine. Seating is a very important factor. Actually, it's one of the top important factors because no matter how cool your vehicle looks, the seating is critical. There is great lower body support as well as side bolster support and the seats are power. Now, as far as lumbar is concerned, there is two-way lumbar and that's on both sides. I appreciate the fact that it's the same on the driver's side and the passenger side. Remember, this is the T5. You can basically get it loaded up with more goodies, but it costs more. And the fact that you're trying to be reasonable in price because you're reasonable in size, you have to keep that factor in mind. I like the fact there are adjustable height seat belts. Really important because we're all built differently and you don't want that seat belt cutting your neck. The seating material in the front is a little bit funny feeling. I prefer leather or even pleather, plastic leather or cloth to this particular material. But the front seats being the same, I really appreciate it. Let's take a look at the second row. In the back seat of the XC60, the seats are really comfortable. They have shape to them, including the backs, so that you feel that you're in a comfortable position. Plenty of space for a middle seat person and cup holders are built into the headrest, which I really appreciate. There's netting behind both seats. The material for all the seats are a bit funny feeling because they're environmentally recycled and friendly, but the tactile feel to it is a bit off. I'm not really sure what that is. It's, it's part of the design of being environmentally friendly. Again, that's a personal choice on your part. I like the fact that there are locks as well as window lifts, plenty of storage, and of course, beautiful sound from the Harman Kardon audio system. Big piece of glass, which I do appreciate. Overall, the seating experience with the front seats, both of them having lumbar, Really nice touch, although it's two-way lumbar. Overall for seating, it earned an eight. When it comes to technology, the first thing most people think of is the center screen. This is set up like an iPad, really easy. You hit your home button right here, starting with your navigation system. Navigation is included. It's a bit dated compared to some of the competition that's out there. I mean, Audi, Mercedes, BMW have really stepped up their game. You hit the center button again. We'll go to the audio system. The audio system is really nice. It's Harman Kardon audio. They've done a nice job. You pick your station, what you want. The one thing I'm noticing is there is FM there is no longer an AM available. Very frustrating to me because I listen to a lot of local traffic so I know where to go and where not to go. And of course your Bluetooth is here as well. So yes, you could use TuneIn, but it's not the same thing when you need an answer right away. Your phone connection is right there and then followed by your weather. Again, you can put this together any way you want. When you're looking at the weather, it makes it nice and easy to read. When you swipe to the right, you can see that you have all the sound experience, FM, Sirius XM radio, Bluetooth, driver performance. You're messaging your car status. You can download things, which is great. And lots of great different apps that you can download. And that includes TuneIn, which is one of the ways to get your AM access. Again, that means you've got to sign up for something. Going to the left and you swipe in, you've got a lot of your safety features here. But this is also a technology, which is great. And one of the ones I like is the cameras because it can allow you to see different things. Zoom 360, your driver assist, your lines, and so forth. So they've done a nice job from the technology standpoint of that particular 
screen. It is a bit slow to react, but overall I think it does a nice job. In front of you, you've got two very simple gauges with the road sign right here. It tells you what the speed limit is in your area, shows you your navigation, and of course what you want. When you start the vehicle, it gives you the full line of safety information. It'll tell you right away if you're not wearing a seatbelt, which of course is important. And if you shut the vehicle off for a period of time and turn it back on, it will go through all the safety features to make sure they're all functioning. Looking at the many features in the Volvo, this is your cruise control here on the left and on the right. This is your distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. On this side, you have your pages, your ability to do the speak, to ask it for directions and other information depending upon how you set that up. Going to right in front of you, we showed you the gauges. The information is right there. Of course, you can change that. And then you've got your standard stocks with the information that is wipers and turn signals and so forth. Going down to the door, you've got your Harman Kardon audio, your memory seating for two, and of course your standard window lifts and such. The center screen, as we described in technology, has a lot of great information and a lot of features. One of the things that people like is you can just touch this for heated seats or heated steering wheel, or you can close that. This particular vehicle does not offer air-cooled seats. So you can adjust that. And if you want to do the temperature, you can go the standard route with going this direction, or you can go in further into the settings to figure that out. This is your audio system. And yes, this is a dial for the volume and it's much appreciated and very easy to use some of these controls such as the defroster and moving forward with and backward with the different uh, systems depending upon whether you're using an SD card or connecting to your phone. Further down, you've got a 12 volt outlet which is good for a radar detector or charging something. And this is a wireless charging port for your phone. This is your Prindle, park, reverse, neutral, drive, and low. I do appreciate that. Not all the vehicles, especially the German vehicles, have this. You have two cup holders. They're kind of small. If you've got anything bigger than a regular small bottle of water, you're going to be disappointed that you cannot get them in there. So their storage is a bit on the limited side. Start, stop is not your usual way. It's right here. And then you've got your drive modes. When you turn the drive mode, you have eco comfort, individual personal driving preferences, dynamic and off-road. That's part of the performance, but what it is is this dial which changes it. It's very nice knurled, very nicely designed. And then inside the glove box, we have a connection for USB, which has been provided by Volvo, very nice. Going into the back seat, one of the features besides the cup holders, there's a charging port in back and a pass-through for skis. Very nice. And then further up, if you look, this is this beautiful panoramic roof. I really like the fact that it's a lot of glass bringing the outside light in. It's one of the really nice features. And for features, it earns an eight. The XC60 front end doesn't look any different. However, for 2021, LED headlights are standard and that's great because it's about visibility and 80% of your driving decisions are based on visibility. Our test vehicle is a T5 with all wheel drive, the Momentum Edition. This has 20 inch alloy wheels that look really nice. Moving our way further back, you can see that same look that we've experienced before with the XC60. They've done a great job merging this all in. And I do like the fact that you can get the factory racks on top for your bikes, your canoe, or whatever it is that you might need. On the back of the vehicle, it pretty much looks the same as last year's XC60, except the R design has a blackout trim. Really easy to see that it's a Volvo XC60, reminding you of a T5 all wheel drive. And for design, it still earns a nine. There's a lot of quality in the Volvo XC60. With a 48 month, 50,000 mile warranty, that tells you that these vehicles are built like other European vehicles, but there's a longer warranty on this than some of its competition. And for quality, both inside and out materials, the only thing that I took it down a point was, I'm really not a fan of that recycled material. It just feels funny to the touch. Again, that's something that's personal to you, but for quality, we gave it a nine. Coming around to the back, the storage area is about 17.8 cubic feet. Put down the second row and you have a huge 63 cubic plus feet of storage. Really nicely done. And then underneath you have a spare tire, which means this vehicle does not run on run flats. When you're looking at the value proposition for this vehicle, there's a lot of competition in that German category. Price point starts at 41,000. Load up our test vehicle, T5 with all wheel drive and a lot of the nice features that you would want. It came in a little over $52,000. Therefore, for value, when you look at this, plus a really good warranty, it earned a nine. 
Totaling up all 10 categories, you can see that this vehicle really offers a lot. There are very few changes for 2021, but the most important changes are the safety features, and they're standard. And that's really important. Volvo's all about safety, like I've been saying throughout the whole thing. That is their mantra. We believe in safety, and they've tried to upgrade things. The only negative I can think of is they took away AM radio. Well, that may not mean much to you, but to some people it does, especially if you want to hear local news or traffic. Sometimes you can't get it on the FM stations. But overall, when you total up all 10 categories, it earned an 85. Now, looking at the competition, which we have reviewed all of it, make sure to check that out on our channel. I can tell you that this vehicle really is a European SUV in a lot of different ways. So make sure to test drive all of them before you make your decision and check with your insurance agent. You may find that this vehicle costs you less because of the cost of replacement and the increased safety. Huge difference when it comes to your insurance policy. If you own a Volvo, you are a Volvo loyalist. You wouldn't consider any other brand. We want you to put your comments down below. Let people know we like to start that conversation. If you didn't buy this vehicle and you bought a BMW or an Audi or a Mercedes or something else, we'd love to hear what your opinion is as well. You can put that down below. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a like. We appreciate you following us on all forms of social media at Lauren Fix and supporting our Patreon page. We'll look forward to seeing you next time and don't forget to check out that website in English and in Spanish. It's all new. Take care.